the country's in a bad spot. You got a guy who is busy eating ice cream most of the time in charge of our Iran policy. And an accomplice on that front from the State Department that even John McCain told us, you know what, has no clue what he is doing. So at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the verge of some kind of major military scuffle. I dare to say a World War III. I hate to say a World War III. But I do remember that it wasn't supposed to be this way if Joe Biden were in office, right? That, according to him, according to him. In fact, he ran on that. He kept saying, oh, my gosh, you know, we're going to wind up in World War III if we allow Donald Trump to stay in this position. Remember that? He went on some show. Drew, I think we have this tape. I want to take you down memory lane 2020 when he actually sounded a little bit more with it. But listen to the context of what is going on. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is there's a lot at stake in this election. You're telling me. Yeah. You know what, Joe Biden? This is on you. This is on you, and it's on you because of a series of bad events. And let's start, shall we, with, oh, I don't know, Afghanistan? Pulling out of Afghanistan, lickety-split, not leaving any people on the ground, making sure you were out, out what? So you could go work on Ukraine in that situation? You could redivert resources? I don't know. But I will tell you this. It was not smart. It was not smart to leave behind all that equipment, to leave no intelligence operations on the ground so that maybe you'd have a chance of figuring out what was going down next. And this, this just takes the cake. Turning over $6 billion to the Iranians along with their hostages. Remember that? We did that nice little hostage swap. And then weeks later, October 7th happens. I'll tell you, Peter Ducey over at Fox News remembers this, and he brought it up just moments ago in the White House briefing. Take a look at this tape just in. Now that we know that the Iranians do not listen to President Biden's public warnings, is there any regret here about unfreezing billions of dollars for Iranian leaders during the president's administration? What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions of dollars. For there Iranian was leaders? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Okay, so first of all... It's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that... But you don't believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to, to fire at Israel? So first of all, I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it, and knocked almost everything out of the sky. So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. And as for this, uh, this unfreezing, none of that fund, n none of those funds, funds set up in an account, by the way, by the previous administration, goes directly to the Supreme Leader, the IRGC, can only be used for humanitarian purposes. And we're watching that account very, very closely to make sure that that's what happens. I mean, he kind of like laughed about it. It almost looked as though it was sort of a joke to him. That's John Kirby there that you just heard trying to say, no, you know, that's not really going down. Well, let me remind you, October of 2023, the Biden administration was out there defending the unfreezing of Tehran's $6 billion in assets, saying that the money was Tehran's to begin with, the profits of oil sales to South Korea that had experienced currency conversion challenges during a period under the Trump administration when sanctions against Tehran were relaxed. They're trying to say, oh, well, it was their money anyway. You know, we were kind of holding it. So we had to give it back to them. Well, they've since changed their tune like a zillion times on this. So first of all, it was like, oh, it was theirs anyway. And then it became, oh, actually, we're not really releasing that. So the status of the money, we're not entirely sure about. Let me be very clear on that. But we do know this. Let me, let me make this very clear. We know that we gave them their hostages. We theoretically gave them the six billion, which we said we were still in control of and that we could like manage those accounts. And later after the fact, they were like, no, no, we're not releasing it. But whatever happened, weeks later, you had the tragedy in Israel that was greenlit, according to my sources, and by the way, according to the sources over at the Wall Street Journal, by none other than Iran. 
And so you put two and two together there and you tell me whether that was smart to do. You tell me whether it was smart to get out of Afghanistan in such a hapless, reckless, destructive way. I think Iran's looking at that and they're saying, gee, like this is our opportunity. We don't know. Maybe Trump will get back in. And I can tell you, I know this. I know this from my own sourcing and my own reporting. Iran does not want Trump. I mean, it's not like it's a, it's a headline or anything, but I can very legitimately confirm that to you. Iran does not want Trump in the Oval Office. Furious. They were absolutely furious that he undid that Obama-Iran deal. They were furious about that, as was a ton of people in the State Department that had devoted their entire careers to that thing, right? So there was a lot of legwork that went into that, and Trump went in, and what do you know, Magic Wand said it's all going away. And so Iran really does not want Donald Trump back. But they might be fearful, as you look at these polls and you see them neck and neck, that Donald Trump could get this thing. So maybe they're saying to our, themselves, well, you know, what else are we going to do? How else can we, how else can we exercise our will here? They're mad because Israel took out one of their embassies in Syria, the consulate there in Syria. They're, they're okay, we have to do something. We have to do something. Well, they did something. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a big deal because it got escalated in ways, the conflict in the Middle East that we just haven't seen. This was Iran itself. This was not a proxy. This was not Hamas. This was not the Houthis. This was Iran signing its name on the dotted line, sending 200 drones into Israel, making a big show of things. Israel, of course, shooting them down and with our help. But now what's next? You see, Israel has to fire back and it will fire back next. And you got good old Biden there sitting there twiddling his thumbs, not knowing which way to take a stand. I mean, Michael Moore is out today telling him, you can't, you can't actually stand with Israel on this. It's going to cost you the election. Imagine, whoa, we're going we're gonna to stand with Iran. We're going to stand with Gaza. We're going to stand with Hamas and the Houthi rebels. I'm sorry, we, that's not who America is. And yet, look where we are. It should come as no surprise, given who's in charge, given who's running the show. John McCain, the late senator, okay? Some of you don't like him. I get it. I know, I know, I know. But he got this one right, ladies and gentlemen. He warned us about Tony Blinken. He said he would be a terrible, terrible undersecretary of state for none other than Barack Obama 14 years ago, 2014. Let's go to the floor there and hear from him himself, John McCain, telling us why Tony Blinken is bad for America. Remember, he is now our secretary of state. Madam President, I rise to discuss in a, my opposition to the pending a vote concerning Mr. Anthony Tony Blinken, who is not only unqualified, but in fact, in my view, uh, one of the worst uh, selections that of a very bad lot that this president has chosen. I hope that many of my colleagues will understand that not often do I come to the floor to oppose a nomination of the President of the United States because I believe that elections have consequences. In this case, this individual has actually been dangerous to America and to the young men and women who are fighting and serving it. Let's just review a couple of some of the elements in particular and Mr. Blinken's role in conceptualizing and furthering it. U.S. foreign policy is in a shambles. It's at best a strategic and at worst, anti-strategic. I'll move on to Afghanistan. Mr. Uh, <coughs> Blinken said, quote, we've been very clear, we've been consistent. The war will be concluded by the end of 2014. We have a timetable and that timetable will not change. This is why I'm so worried about him being in the position that he's in. Because we, if they stick to that timetable, I am telling my colleagues that we will see the replay of Iraq all over again. We must leave a stabilizing force behind of a few thousand troops or 
we will see again what we saw. Got it right. Unfortunately, that's exactly what's going down today. In other words, we made this mad dash out of Afghanistan. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, well, Donald Trump negotiated that deal. He wanted out. Yeah, he sure as heck wanted out. I've spoken to him at length about this in the past. He does not want to sacrifice any American lives unless there's a real push come to shove, right? Unless you really have to go in there and it's full-on military. By the way, a reason why you need a strong military, for goodness sakes, you can't have the people recruiting on TikTok that are recruiting on TikTok for the Navy right now, if you get my drift. You need patriotism. You need people willing to stand up and die for this wonderful, great country. How can they ever do that, ladies and gentlemen? How would they ever want to do that in light of what you've been teaching them? You really want to go to war for a country that's a colonist country, that's a racist country, that is going to suppress you and keep you down? And I'm sorry, you're not, right? you got to remember, it is a great country. And you need to reinstill that in Americans if you expect to be able to be strong on the world stage, Joe Biden. I mean, you want to have your cake and eat it too every single way. John McCain got it. John McCain got it. And he knew Blinken, who's been your advisor your entire career, Joe, didn't know what he was doing and was too hungry for the, the punchline of we're out, we're out, we're out. Or the headline, I should say. I mean, these guys were committed to a headline as soon as they got into office. They needed to get out of Afghanistan. They wanted to get out ahead of the 20-year anniversary of Afghanistan. They didn't care what it meant or what it cost them or what the reality of the future would be. Well, we're looking at the future right now. This is the future. And we've got a conflict in the Middle East unlike anything we have seen in decades, unlike anything since Iraq. A new report out today in the Jerusalem Post saying that it was Turkey that warned us. Turkey found out through Iran that Iran intended to have those drone strikes, the 200 drones it sent over. And it was Turkey, of course, our sources in Turkey, our alliances in Turkey that informed us. And we have uh, allegedly, according to the Jerusalem Post, or did, per the Jerusalem Post, we told Turkey to tell Iran, okay, but you know what? It's got to be within these certain confines, et cetera, et cetera. It's like war games, right, being played out on a big international stage. Well, you know what? War games are costly. And I don't like war games. I don't like war games because not only are they costly, they are costly in terms of lives. And this is what we're risking. Instead of actually sanctioning the living daylights out of Iran and anybody who dared to do business with Iran, we are instead playing war games. And that's going to come with serious consequences. McCain did warn us. Donald Trump warned us. And now, as we look at November fast approaching, Americans see a Democrat party led by a very old man. Do we have the video of the ice cream, Drew? I saw that come up earlier. I might as well play it for people. Who likes to go and get his ice cream cones on Sundays, I guess, or spend some time at the beach, who is struggling and they have to put special shoes on him, right? Especially when he's going up the stairs or down the stairs. And Joe Biden, um, yeah, here he is. This, this is your president. I'm not concerned about the strength of the dollar. I'm concerned about the rest of the world. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, this is an important clip to play. I mean, not just because he's eating. <laughs> this is an important clip to play, not just because he's eating ice cream, ladies and gentlemen, but because of what he's saying here. Joe Biden. This is from, oh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, making it very clear that his concern is the world, right? The stability of the world, et cetera. He's not really concerned about the stability of the U.S. dollar and the inflation, the massive inflation Americans are dealing with. No, not here. He's, he's concerned with eating his ice cream. And while he says this, it was like the Pence moment. Remember when Tucker took down Pence? Remember when Tucker was like, hey, you know, well, what about everyday Americans? You're so worried about Ukraine. And Mike Pence said, well, that's not my concern, Tucker. That's not my concern. You always say that. And then he doubled down. 
you know, because we're going to worry about Ukraine. Here's Joe Biden while eating ice cream saying, you know what? I'm not concerned about the U.S. dollar or the stability of the U.S. dollar. Oh, I don't care about inflation. What do I care about inflation? I'm caring about the rest of the world. Come on, buddy. Watch it again. I'm not concerned about the strength of the dollar. I'm concerned about the rest of the world. Does that make sense? Can you explain that? Yes. Uh, Our economy is strong as hell. The internal. Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off everywhere else in the United States. So the problem is the lack of economic growth and sound policy in other countries, not so much ours. Worried about growth in other countries. I mean, what a stupid, moronic thing to say. You ought to worry about growth here. I'll tell you who's worried about growth here. Our good friends over at Americans for Prosperity. They care about what's going on here at home. This is why I like them so much. If you have not checked them out, I encourage you, go sign up for their good stuff. You'll get a lot of good research. This is a team that really does care very much about what's going on here at home. I mean, it, it, this was just such an asinine comment from an asinine president, frankly. But telling, very, very telling in light of everything. Americans for Prosperity, they're the team that understand what's going on for inflation right now. They're the team that understand what is happening at our border. They actually get what's going on from a strategic sense on the international front. And it's one of the reasons why I really do. I like them so, so much. So check them out today, americansforprosperity.org. I mean, we, we, we flew out of Afghanistan and here we are now looking at a serious mess, a mess on every front. I mean, here's a question for you. Wouldn't you be a little worried about the border? You get some 8 million people that have come into this country under Joe Biden's administration. We don't know who they are. Joe Biden actually encouraged them to surge the border back in 2020. I've played you that clip before. He actually said this. He said, I encourage them to come surge the border. We have no idea who's here. And somehow it's, it's, it's wrong to say, I think we actually ought to have a, a better system. I don't think we can just let all these people in. I don't think we should be flying them in the dead of the night with U.S. taxpayer dollars. Thank you very much to here, there, and everywhere. You can't say that. You're, you're bad. You are. They think you're bad. They think if you dare to think differently than them, you are bad. If you dare to think, I want to protect my community, I want to know who's here, then somehow you are the enemy. Well, they're wrong. And now... As we teeter on the verge of a very problematic environment in Iran and the Middle East and Israel, we don't know who the heck is here. No idea. Because all of these people have crossed into the border. Biden got rid of the wall. Biden wouldn't offer enough money to actually reinforce border security there. And actually, he held up a giant welcome sign. Come one, come all. We'll give you everything. We'll give you free health care, in California anyway. We'll give you a debit card. We'll give you a hotel stay. We'll give you a cell phone. We'll give you a court date some many years in the future when you can show up or not show up. Hey, maybe we'll even give you the ability to vote in a local school board election out in Berkeley, California. Why not? Why not? What does that then transcend to in the future? This is messed up. From a national security perspective, it's messed up. From an economic perspective, it's messed up. And from a political perspective, thank you very much, it's also messed up. You see new polls showing that he is suffering. Biden is suffering among the Hispanic population, the legal Hispanic population here in America. That doesn't surprise me. You think you want a bunch of illegals coming in, depressing wages in your community, possibly ratcheting up crime? I don't think so. And this comes as news to Joe Biden and the Democrats that, oh my gosh, we're suffering now with Hispanics. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey guys, I am feeling much better. Thank you for asking me. I'm looking at some of your comments there. You know, I was having some vocal issues on Friday. I'm feeling terrific. And I think one of the reasons I am feeling good is because I did remember over the weekend to make sure I took the fruits and veggies capsules. 
How do you like that? <laughs> These guys are great. Balance of nature. I really like this stuff. In all seriousness, I am telling you, like, I've felt great since I've been taking it. And we're going back to really almost the start of the year when I started taking this. And I notice a difference. I think you guys are noticing a difference. 1-800-246-8751. That is their number. 1-800-246-8751. You can call them. You can speak with them. You can use and you should use my discount code, Trish, T-R-I-S-H, because you can get 35% off. You get $10 in an extra incentive and you get free shipping. So I don't think you can beat that anywhere. I do encourage you to take a look at it. It's very, very good stuff. You know, if you if you have a gluten intolerance, don't worry. There's no gluten in there. They get none of the bad stuff. They get all the good in the way of those vitamins that we all so need right now. I don't know about you, but, you know, we're going into allergy season. And for me, if I get a little bit of allergy, sometimes it translates into a cold, this, that, and the other. So far, so good. Knock on wood. And I'm thanking in a big way the fact that I'm getting the fruits and veggies. The fruits and veggies capsule from Balance of Nature. Go check them out online. You can actually read all about the history of the company. Really tremendous history. And they've, over the last 20 years, just assembled this enormous outpouring from people who take it and swear by it. One of my friends, actually, I've told you this story, called me the other day saying, oh my gosh, I was listening to your show. I heard you say this. I love it. And I'm like, that is fantastic. It really makes me happy. I'm curious if you do take it, let me know. Some of you, I think Leslie reached out saying that she's been taking it for years. She also likes it. So that makes me happy. We're all in the club, in the club, so to speak.